Welcome to Murder Pays the Rent, another day in the life of a forensic photographer. My name is Mike Wilson. I'm a certified forensic photographer. I worked for the Los Angeles Police Department for 26 years as a photographer. I was working at my job location at Van Nuys Station in the San Fernando Valley at 8 o'clock when I got the call from headquarters downtown at Parker Center asking if I would do a, an assignment over the hill in, in the Hollywood Hills on the other side of the valley. I usually worked only in the San Fernando Valley, which was about 25 square miles, and there was enough activity there to keep me busy doing routine calls and doing whatever needed to be done. And they needed some help, and this was within about 5 or 10 miles of the top of the Hollywood Hills, and so I could drive over there, and I did agree to do that. So about 8.30, I left Van Nuys Station and went to Upper Franklin Canyon Road in the Hollywood Hills. At approximately 9 o'clock, I arrived at the entrance to the crime scene on Upper Franklin Canyon Road. I talked to the uh, log officer and reported in so that he knew that I had arrived. Upper Franklin Canyon Road in this area was used often by the uh, video and film industry to show scenes in close in the close proximity to Los Angeles that appeared to be out in the forest someplace. So it was wonderful and it was a regular place for them to use. At about 9.15, I found the detectives in charge at the scene and identified myself. We had worked together on past homicide scenes and so we knew each other quite well. From 9.30 till noon, I documented the crime scene. A dead young woman was found lying in the middle of a dirt road. She was found naked spread eagle on the dirt road. I used the bullseye technique starting from the widest part of the road and worked my way from the four points of the compass doing concentric circles. I made about four rounds documenting what I thought was important. That took me several hours and then I went and back to the detectives and reported in as to what I had done, and we continued on from there. From approximately 1 o'clock until 5 o'clock, the de detectives and I moved in close onto the victim and into the immediate area close to the scene, looking for any and all evidence and documenting whatever was available to, to capture. At about 5.30, the coroner's van showed up to pick up the body. With the help of the coroner's helper, we were able to turn the body. You have to understand that we could not touch the body. That's the rules in the county of Los Angeles, that only the coroner's office was able to touch the body and move anything. So we wanted to see what was going on. We had to wait for the coroner's office to come and have the uh, assistant help us. So the I took pictures of the body. We rolled the body over, and I looked, took pictures of the front and back, top half and the bottom half, anything that was uh, unusual. The uh, coroner's pickup van picked up the body and went off back to the coroner's office. The detectives and I got in our individual cars, and we went to the county coroner's office down by County USC Medical Center, got there, and there was a forensic pathologist waiting for us, and the body was put out on a table, washed down, cleaned up, and the forensic pathologist went about uh, determining the cause of death, which was strangulation, and figured out, we figured out what she had for her last meal. She had some chicken and some vegetables, and upon further examination, we figured out that the uh, right nipple of the victim had been bitten off. And uh, I made close-up images with scale of the, the teeth marks left by the perpetrator. Later, I, a forensic odontologist, that's a dentist, was able to match the bite marks found on the victim to the suspect. Later, uh, Jill Barkham's murder was attributed to rot serial killer Rodney Akala. He was connected to the murder of at least eight women. Akala was at the height of a murder spree 
when in 1978 he put himself on the spotlight of primetime television, winning a date with a young woman on the TV hit show called The Dating Game. And uh, he was convicted, and while he was waiting on death row, he died in 2021. If you'd like additional information and would like to read the Los Angeles Times article, you can click on the upper right to read that. And on the upper left is a link to the, the segment from the dating game where he won a date with one of the contestants.